the UK, there are now calls on Prime Minister Boris Johnson to step down after the Supreme Court dealt him a huge blow. It ruled today that his decision to suspend or prorogue Parliament was unlawful. It was a unanimous decision by the court's 11 judges. This was not a normal prorogation in the run-up to a Queen's speech. It prevented Parliament from carrying out its constitutional role for five out of the possible eight weeks between the end of the summer recess and exit day on the 31st of October. The court is bound to conclude, therefore, that the decision to advise Her Majesty to prorogue Parliament was unlawful because it had the effect of frustrating or preventing the ability of Parliament to carry out its constitutional functions without reasonable justification. Mr Johnson had suspended Parliament till mid-October in what critics said was a move to squash debate on the Brexit policies before the October 31st deadline. But today's ruling, well, it means that Parliament was never legally suspended and is technically still sitting. Let's go to Ollie Barrett in London for more on this story. Ollie, walk us through the ruling. Well, the Supreme Court's first job was to decide whether this was indeed a matter for the courts. The government had argued all along this was a political issue and shouldn't be being decided in the courts at all. Well, the Supreme Court rejected that and rejected that roundly. It then moved effectively to the next phase and decided that Boris Johnson's advice to the Queen to suspend Parliament was unlawful because it was not a normal prorogation. It was extreme in its effect on the workings of democracy. Uh, and this means that Parliament is effectively still sitting, that the uh, suspension of Parliament was deemed by the court to be null and void and therefore never really came into effect. This has huge potential implications for Boris Johnson, but also uh, for the UK's democracy, for the role of courts in Britain's political life um, and for the role of the Supreme Court, the, the highest court in the land here in the UK. So a very, very significant ruling indeed, and it was unanimous, all 11 judges uh, agreeing. Many people had speculated that this would be a split decision. No doubt a massive blow to the Prime Minister, Oli. Perhaps the worst possible outcome that he could have anticipated. What now are the repercussions, though, for Boris Johnson? Well, Boris Johnson is immediately being called upon to resign by opposition party lawmakers. He said before the ruling that he wouldn't do so, but we shouldn't rule it out completely. That is one of the routes that Boris Johnson could get to the general election that he so uh, dearly says that he wants. Um, he will potentially have to fly back from the United Nations General Assembly meetings in New York earlier uh, than planned. And certainly, in terms of his personal reputation as Prime Minister, it, it will, with many British voters, not do him any favours at all to have been found to have uh, misled the Queen with the advice that he gave her to suspend uh, Parliament. That advice deemed to have been incorrectly given by the Supreme Court. At the same time, though, it does again allow his supporters to portray him as being the man fighting for the people, fighting for Brexit against the UK establishment. Well, and Ollie, what does this then mean for the Brexit process? Well, the Supreme Court was very explicit, actually, in its ruling that it was not uh, making a decision about Brexit. It was not making a decision about the timing of Brexit or how it should happen. Nonetheless, it will certainly have an effect, especially if there is a vote of no confidence that brings down Boris Johnson's government or if Boris Johnson's government uh, resigns. It also allows MPs more scrutiny of the Brexit process. So many opposition MPs have been calling for exactly that uh, throughout the period since uh, the suspension uh, of Parliament started, even though it's now been uh, overturned. It means that uh, MPs will be able to haul ministers uh, in front of them for questions. They will be able to uh, launch emergency debates in the House of Commons with the uh, help of the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko. So extra scrutiny for Brexit at a time when many MPs were getting increasingly worried about how Boris Johnson plans to uh, deliver Brexit by October the 31st, even though he's been mandated by previous votes in the House of Commons to seek a Brexit extension if he can't reach a deal. All right, many thanks for helping us understand all that. Ollie Barrett speaking to us from London, and we'll have plenty more on this new development in British politics a little later on on Asia Tonight.